yes, I do think uh, that the, in June, when BlackRock uh, announced its filing, or when it was announced that uh, BlackRock had filed for Bitcoin ETF, uh, the Bitcoin price did shoot up. Uh, and but. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Finance Wolf. In this video, Kathy will talk about cryptocurrency and the Bitcoin ETF. Market I asked Kathy about the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, known by its ticker pick, and she replied, You know we've been putting out our Bitcoin monthly for the last year. We are now starting a Bitcoin brainstorming session, our first one we launched last Thursday so we're trying to get the word out there that you know our research is deep and we've been doing it since 2015 when we gained our first exposure to BTC. If you look at our dough, for example, your Archek Next Generation Internet ETA right now, I see GIC as the third largest holding. Kathy responded to my question, saying, I cannot talk about what we would and would not do. In fact, our compliance team is giving us strict instructions not to talk about this filing or its implications at all. The fact that we filed with our partner 21 shares is as far as I can go, and Kathy would go into great detail about a lot of other topics. Please watch the video to the end, like it, and subscribe to our channel. Finance Wolf, thank you. Has been fairly stable since then. Uh, so I, I do think it's had an impact. A, a bigger impact this year was the regional bank crisis. It was very interesting to watch Bitcoin uh, go from 19,000 to 30,000 right in the middle of that banking crisis as uh, regional banks were going bankrupt. So it was a flight to safety. So uh, I thought that move was just as interesting. Hang on, a flight to safety is buying Bitcoin? <laughs> some well, if you think about it, uh, uh, Bitcoin serves as uh, two kinds of hedges. One is a hedge against inflation and outright confiscation of wealth. The other is against counterparty risk. And, uh, you know, when, when the regional banks started uh, going down, this fear sort of, uh, uh, you know, memory, uh, our memories are fresh with 0809, the counterparty risk uh, became real. And so there was this flight into Bitcoin, a completely decentralized, transparent uh, network, which is not subject to counterparty risk. Uh, Kathy, so you are in this race. Let's talk about the race a little bit. The first important dare. I, I think you're probably right that uh, August 13th will come and go. And uh, uh, I think uh, I think the SEC, if it's going to approve a Bitcoin ETF, will approve more than one uh, at, at, at once. Uh, so then, uh, again, because most of these essentially will be the same, and it will come down to marketing, communicating the message. You know, we've been putting out our uh, Bitcoin monthly for the for the last uh, year uh, we are now starting a Bitcoin um, brainstorming session uh, our first one we launched last Thursday uh, so we're trying to get the word out there that uh, you know our research is deep and we've been doing it since 2015 when we gained our first exposure to GBTC, we were the first public asset manager to gain uh, exposure to Bitcoin at all in 2015. That's exactly where I want to go, the grayscale Bitcoin. So just the fact that we filed with our partner 21 shares is is as far as, as I can go. Fair I'm sorry, enough. Katie. Fair enough. No, <laughs> I was expecting something along those lines. Uh that the two other branches of government, the judicial branch and the legislative branch, uh, are, are giving uh, the SEC pause uh, because the SEC is losing cases in court having to do with its regulations uh, around crypto. That's the first thing. And there are bills that are making their way through the House uh, and are seeing some bipartisan support. Uh, so I do believe that that uh, Gary Gensler, I guess last week or 10 days ago, said something like, well, you know, I'm not the only one who makes this decision. There are five commissioners. Now, of course, we know they're weighted uh, towards uh, the Democrats, three Democrats, two Republicans. And so one assumes that uh, uh, the way that Gary votes is the way the, the FCC will vote. But he seemed to be distancing himself a little bit. And so maybe we can take that as a bit of a clue. 
we definitely did. We thought that was a, a good sign, but you know, we're reading all kinds of tea leaves. Uh, we, uh, we think that it is the most regulatory compliant exchange uh, out there. Uh, and uh, we've been very pleased with how its um, derivatives exchange in Bermuda has ramped in here. It's very early days, but again, clearly a trusted partner. Uh, and, uh, and we are also seeing that there's more turmoil out there, I guess. Uh, Pube, I think that's how you say the name of the exchange, uh, and uh, Tether and uh, Binance, there are still, there are rumblings out there that not as all, all is well. Uh, and so uh, Coin, Coinbase is going to be the flight to safety exchange, no doubt about it. And do you think the surveillance agreements with Coinbase are... We believe that uh, the SEC will lose the grayscale case. How can you approve a Bitcoin futures ETF and, and not a Bitcoin ETF? Uh, and, and in fact, if you're really thinking about consumer protection, uh, a, a futures ETF is swap space. So there's counterparty risk there that you would not have with a Bitcoin ETF, which is backed one to one uh, with uh, Bitcoin in Coinbase's cold storage. Uh, it still confounds me. And not to mention the, the point that Eric makes, which is that if there had been... Zach and love Zach and, and think he will do very well uh, wherever he goes. I, I, uh, I know there are rumors out that there are some CEO positions out there, which um, uh, he might like to take. So um, we will miss him. Uh, but his successor has been with Tesla right underneath him. Uh, since 2018. So he was put through the fires. Remember in 2018-19, many, uh, many analysts were saying uh, that Tesla was going bankrupt. And so he's been there, he's gone through the fire, and, uh, you know, it's a tough job. It's a tough, tough job. So I, uh, I guess 13 years was uh, a really good run for Zach, and can't say enough good things about him and what he did for Tesla. Do but you... I think he trained his successor well. That's uh, great to A five-year investment time horizon. And, and we do think the cycle for autos is going to get tougher in here generally. Uh, but we think just like last year when electric vehicles were up 69% or 65%, something like that, and gas-powered vehicles down 7% globally, we think we're going to continue to see that share shift accelerate because uh, electric vehicle prices are going to follow the co their costs down in a way that gas-powered cars cannot. So we think that electric vehicles will be less expensive, and they are better cars than uh, gas-powered vehicles. Uh, so we think they're going to take tremendous share. And uh, even if the auto market uh, re relapses in here, which we think it could, uh, we don't think electric vehicles will, will relapse. So we think the 1.8 million for this year, which was, Elon said 1.8 to 2 million, they're going to have some shutdowns in the third quarter for maintenance and upgrades. Uh, and so he lowered uh, he lowered his expectation to the lower end of that range. Mm. I think he likes to lower expectations and then beat. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's higher than that. Um, uh, BNAF. Well, I know very early on they, they said to their suppliers, you know, if if you will build it, we will buy it. So, yes, they've been in a preferred position and probably still are. Uh, they're also very smart. Tesla's engineers are very smart. They are engineering cobalt out of the cars. Uh, they're doing it for a few reasons. The supply is uncertain, and it's very focused in, um, I guess, the Congo, uh, where there are a lot of... Uh, environmental and governance and social concerns. So they're engineering it out uh, and they're moving into, uh, and you should say uh, on lithium, uh, actually, if you look at the price, it went up tenfold in two years and now it's down uh, about 40% from that peak. I think uh, lithium is one of the most pervasive uh, minerals out there. So uh, we don't think uh, lithium is an issue at all, especially now that uh, the Chinese and the uh, Koreans and all of the U.S. OEMs uh, are are basically telling lithium miners just uh, just build it and and we will take it. 
so, and then the other interesting thing is, again, this is Tesla leading the charge, so to speak, in this category. Um, lithium iron phosphate. So, uh, uh, taking out the nickel and other metals that may end up in short supply, especially if we get into very strong cycles. And uh, the uh, lithium ion iron phosphate is a much lower priced or will lead to a much lower priced car as well. Uh, Kathy, real quick, I wanted to get in uh, the 